Hello ladies and gentle ladies and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for Forge 1.20 and in this tutorial we're going to be covering how we can add parchment mappings to our workspace. So let's go ahead and get started. So what are parchment mappings? Let's get started with that big question that a lot of you are going to have. So parchment mappings are a way for us to map our parameter names. Let's, for example, go into a class such as maybe screen, right? So just the default screen class. And you'll see in here we have a lot of parameters like this, where we have P underscore 283 688 underscore P299 421 underscore etc etc. And you'll see that on every single method uh, in the game except some forge methods. So it would be nice if we could have these have actual names, right? If we could have, say, for example, here in insert text, it would say, um, actually, I don't know what the Boolean is, so that's not very helpful. Uh, maybe in it, for example, right? It would be nice if this could say in it, Minecraft, Minecraft, int width, int height, right? That would be useful. Um, so how do we do that? And the way we can do that is with parchment. Now, what Parchment does is it is a community tool that will build upon the official mapping. So we still have all the same methods, class names, fields, etc. But it will build upon those to add community sourced parameter names. Now, unfortunately, what this does mean is that not every single method is going to be covered by Parchment. So there are going to be some missing parameter names still. And that's just something we have to deal with because it's community sourced. So there, there can only be so much work uh, done into that without uh, spending forever. So how do we add it? Well, luckily, adding it is fairly simple, really. So the first thing we'll want to do is go into our build.gradle in the root of our project. And at the top up here, we're going to want to add ID. And then we're going to go org.parchmentmc.librarian.forgegradle. And then we're going to say version 1.0. Okay. The next thing we're going to want to do is go into our gradle.parchment properties which is also in the root of our project and down here where we have the mapping channel we're going to change this to parchment then we're going to want to do the mapping version now for the mapping version we can't just put 1.20.2 because there's loads of different versions of parchment and it's not just one specific version for each Minecraft version because there's always new parameter names being added to the project. So how do we get the current version? Now you can do this in two ways. The first way is going to their Maven and actually looking at their version list. That works fine. However, I have added a function to my Discord bot that allows you to do this through a simple command. So if you're not already in my Discord server, there will be a link in the description of this video and in every single video, and you can join there and hang out and all that stuff. But if you come into the bot channel down the bottom, you can run slash latest all, so slash latest, or alternatively, you can run specifically slash latest parchment, and that will just load for a second, and then it will show you the latest parchment version. And all you need to do is copy paste uh, this. Now, this parchment version right here is actually uh, slightly bugged because it says the exact same thing. So that's that's something I do need to fix. Uh, but you just want to grab uh, this version one. I mean, they're both the same, so it doesn't really matter which one you grab. You just want to copy that and go back into IntelliJ and paste it here for this mapping version. Now, there is one important thing to note, and that this is actually the wrong way round. So where it says 1.20.2 dash, it actually should be dash 1.20.2. That's just, once again, a bug with my bot. Um, I kind of realized that a few days ago, and I haven't got around to fixing it yet. Hopefully, by the time this video has released, I will have fixed that, so you won't have to worry about that anyways. And there, that will change your... Uh, parchment version basically and 
The next thing we need to do is go into our settings.grader, which is also in the root of our projects. And we're going to want to add a new Maven here, and this will be the parchment Maven. So we'll go Maven. We're going to give it a name, which is just going to be parchment. And you can call it like parchment MC as Copilot has suggested. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. It's just a name that you can give it. And once again, as you as Copilot has suggested here, the URL is https colon slash slash maven dot parchment mc dot org. And it's very important that you get that exactly correct. Otherwise, of course, that won't work. Now, some of you are obviously going to try and visit this site. And if you do do that, um, you'll actually find that it brings you to this site right here. And this is basically the site where it lists all of the versions. So you come into here, um, we can say, for example, I think it's in data and you'll see parchment 122 and you'll see the latest is 2023.10.08, which is exactly what we just put in our um, gradle.properties here. So that's how you would get it manually uh, if you wanted to do that. And that's basically all we need to do. So now we can just hit this uh, gradle refresh button right here. Or alternatively, you can do the same as what we did in our previous tutorial and come to the Gradle tab and then hit this reload button right there. And once again, same as the previous tutorial, yours may look slightly different to this, but the whole concept of the kind of layout is going to be exactly the same. So you just want to let that reload. And if you want to view the proper progress of that, you can go view and you can go to windows and you can go to build. And you'll see here that it's uh, downloaded some stuff. Uh, it's running the access transformers, uh, SRG to MCP, all that kind of stuff. So that will go through that and that will build. And when that's done, we should see that we can now have proper parameter names. So I'll see you once this has completed. All right, so there we go. That has completed. That was way quicker than I expected. And hopefully it does say build success for you as well. And then we can just close that window. Now, if we go into that same class again, so if we go into the screen class and obviously all places, screen, and we scroll down a little bit, you'll see almost all of these methods will have uh, actual parameter names now. So see if we can actually find one that doesn't. And I, I think you'll find that every single one in kind of the major classes have them. Uh, this one doesn't here, this confirm link. Uh, I think this Boolean is just whether or not it opens like um, in a new tab and stuff. But yeah, you as you can see, almost all of these methods do have uh, parameter names, which is great. And that is extremely useful when you go into something like a rendering code, right? So if you're going to say, uh, maybe a buffer builder, right? And you go into here and you can see that like all of this stuff now has parameter names, which allows us to, uh, you know, here, for example, right? Try and do this with without parchment. And it's like, oh my God, what are all these, all these numbers? It, it's very helpful for things like this and for just general uh, stuff really but yeah that's all i wanted to really talk about in this tutorial obviously you can run the game and it will be exactly the same not a single thing will change it's it's just kind of in the dev environment that it looks different but yeah i hope you guys found this tutorial useful and if you did do please be sure to give it a like and subscribe uh, if you really enjoyed it you can also join my patreon and support me and yeah i'll see you in the next tutorial which will be on menus and uh, having like an inventory in our GUI. So I will see you then. Goodbye.